Welcome back to Kazakhstan and to its capital city, Astana, host of the 2015 World Judo Championships. After the drama of the men's competition, our focus now switches to the women's competition, where we see the best highlights from all seven weight categories. We look at the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and their world champion, Sol Kyung. Former British world champion Neil Adams speaks to us about his role as commentator for the International Judo Federation. And we feature the British team, who have six female judoka competing, including the 2012 Olympic silver medalist, Gemma Gibbons. We start by asking British coach John Paul Bell about the team's prospects. I'm excited and looking forward to the World Championships this year. Um, we've had a very successful year. Uh, I think it's a total of 16 medals at Grand Prix level or above. The team are excited um, and we're looking for best performances on the day. One of the things Gemma Gibbons struggled with uh, over the last couple of years is the injuries post London and have kept her not so much out of tournaments but off of her training time. She's done exceptionally well to get back up and uh, Mongolia was just her arrival, if you like, back on the scene, winning a gold medal. So she's come here really, really buzzing and uh, looking forward to competing. The London Olympics were amazing. Since then, it's been a bit of a rocky road. I actually broke my thumb while I was competing at the Olympics. Um, so I had to have surgery on that and I was out for six months. And then in training, I broke my wrist and then I found out I needed shoulder surgery. Since London, I'd had these injuries and every time I'd been rushing back, thinking I need to fight, I need to fight. So this time I said, no, I'm going to make sure I'm fully fit and then I'm going to go into competition. The build up to the World Championships obviously started a long time ago, um, but the last little bit of prep started about three weeks ago. Um, the whole team headed down to Walsall where the British Judo Centre of Excellence is based. So it was just like training at home but with lots of extra bodies, which as any judo player will know, it's really important. Especially in Britain, we don't have thousands and thousands of people. Um, we don't even have hundreds at each centre. So when all the centres come together, um, it's much better for our training. So I woke up today at half eight, which is quite a nice time. Uh, so I just had a bowl of cereal, cereal that I bought from the shop so that I knew that I'd like it and that it wouldn't come up badly on, on the day that I'm fighting. My warm-up lasts about 45 minutes. I start off with just running around, getting my body nice and warm and loose. Um, then I'll start doing Uchikomi, which is just going in and out for the throws and making the movement, really, um, of all my different favourite throws that I'll hopefully be using out on the mat later. Then I progress from that and I do some gripping and there's lots of different gripping strategies in judo. So depending on who I'm fighting, I talk through my, with my training partner Colin because he's pretty good at judo himself and he always gives me some good tips. So we talk through what gripping uh, patterns to do. And then we start moving on to moving Uchikomi, which is the same as making the shapes, but it's on the move, obviously. I get Colin to act like the person that I'm gonna fight and then I'll grab him and do one hard nagikomi, which is throwing him through the floor as hard as I can. And I'll do probably four sets of that. We start by seeing how GB's under 57 kilogram fighter, Nakoda Davis, got on. Her first contest was against Bulgaria's Ilieva. Your commentator is Neil Adams. Well, Smith Davis fighting for the dominant grip. Got to be careful of that, though. Left-handed Ilieva. Kate Howie just shouting advice in between the mates. And now Davis has the sleeve. Oh, beautiful Tayatoshi body drop throw. And that was superb. She caught the sleeve as Ilieva came forwards. And then she turned on it, split her legs, and over Ilieva went. Landed cleanly onto her back for the Ippon. Great technique there from Davis. That puts her through to the next round. Davis has the grip that she likes over the top of her opponent's shoulder. Now she's going to attack. And there she does. Ochi Gary major in a reaping throw. And she drives her cleanly onto her shoulders for the Ippon. 
Brilliant stuff there from Davis. Avondian didn't stand a chance. She pins the shoulder, she drives her backwards, and she lands her cleanly on the points of her shoulders. Great hip on there from Smith Davis, who goes now through to the next round. Between her contests, the British coaching staff analyzed video footage of Davis and of her next opponent. If Davis wins her next fight, she will be into the quarterfinal. But she's up against one of the best in the category, double European champion Autumn Pavia of France. Well, Smith Davis has a work cut out here. Pavia, a step up in class, the Olympic bronze medalist, two times European champion. And she knows exactly what she wants, grip wise. Oh, beautiful foot sweep there from Pavia. And she can't stay here, Davis. She'll have to get up. Pavia looking to turn her over into a hold down. And she does. She holds her down. She's got a hold her there now for 20 seconds. She's out. Davis is out. She has the leg trapped. And now Pavia trying to tie up the top half of her opponent's body to take that leg out. The seconds won't count until that leg is out. Now it's out, and Davis is being held down. Pavia of France holds, she squeezes, and she's on her back in trouble here, Davis. This just before the quarterfinals, there's the hip on, and because it's before the quarterfinals, it means that Smith Davis of Great Britain is out of the tournament. The under 57 kilogram final was a rematch of the London Olympic final between the gold medalist Matsumoto of Japan and the silver medalist Capriorio of Romania. Who would come out on top in Astana? Wow, Matsumoto used to being number one and there's a beautiful Ashiwaza there driving Capriorio over and she scores a Wazari. A sticky foot as she was up, and it was beautifully driven. Matsumoto is in charge of this match. The Olympic champion back to her best. Look how she catches the foot and drives. Controls it with the hands, and she drives her over onto her back. Five seconds left on the clock. Capriori pushing forwards. Matsumoto just got a hold off, and she gets her second world title. The Olympic champion really is back to her very best. And look at the smile on her face, says it all. The Japanese celebrate. It was the Ashiwaza that did it. She stuck onto the foot. Look at the drive. Look at the control with the hands. And she rolls her onto her back for a Wazari. Matsumoto back to where she belongs, on top of the world rostrum. Japan's former double world champion at under 52 kilograms, Nakamura, found herself just seconds away from defeat in her semi-final against Brazil's Miranda. But in judo, anything can happen. And with just three seconds on the clock, Nakamura attacked. She scored a Wazari, and the Japanese fighter was into the final. The landing of the technique with zero seconds remaining. In the final, she overcame Romania's Kitsu by penalties. Nakamura joins an elite club of triple world champions. GB's Kelly Edwards had just the one contest, losing by a penalty to Jofrida of Italy. At the lightest female weight of under 48 kilograms, Argentina's Pareto went one better than her silver medal from last year when she defeated Japan's Asami in the final. And in the heaviest weight category of over 78 kilograms, the gold medal was won by China's Yu Song. We then took some time to speak to IJF commentator Neil Adams about his role. There's two different kinds of commentating. You commentate what you see and then what you don't see. And that's my advantage. I just do climb in there with them every time. And so it's why, you know, for seven days for the World Championships, the voice starts to go a little bit, but it's excitement and it's passion. 
can she pull it off? She's gone straight over Polly and a new code there. And Posvik just opens up the account immediately. I think that as a fighter, you carry on because the winning is, is like a drug and nothing ever takes its place. I went into coaching and I'm still coaching now, but also I'm a commentator. So I kind of get in there with them, but it's never the same and you'll never get it back. But I get as close as I could possibly get. Scoring the upon is the main aim of our game. It's the most unbelievable feeling when it all comes together at the same time. When it's a, a technique is working all correctly and it happens in the split second, you hardly feel it happening. But when it happens, the person's going over and then they land and you're kind of looking over them uh, thinking, how did that happen? There were high expectations for GB's Alice Schlesinger in the under 63 kilograms category. Ahead on penalties in her opening contest, disaster struck with just 40 seconds to go as Franson of the Netherlands threw her for a Yuko score. Schlesinger was unable to pull it back and as quick as that, she was out of the World Championships. Unfortunately, it was the same fate for GB teammate Sally Conway in the under 70 kilograms as she bowed out in her first contest to Japan's Arai. The contest had gone into golden score, as there was no winner after four minutes. It meant that just a Yuko was enough to win the contest outright and end Conway's hopes in Astana. With the shock of Schlesinger and Conway bowing out early, GB pinned their hopes on the shoulders of 2012 Olympic silver medalist Gemma Gibbons. She spoke to us about how she felt before going out to fight. I definitely feel nerves when I'm in the holding area. Um, I think probably every judo player does. You're giving your whole life for this. It's what you want more than anything else. And it's going to come down to the next five minutes. And it's also a fight. So it's not just going out there and, and seeing what you can do. You're actually having to deal with someone else doing something to you. In her first fight, Gibbons was up against Samantha Blair, of the United States of America. So Gibbons, the Olympic silver medalist from London. And well, Kate Howie's saying she's got to be first into the attack. Got to dominate the grip first and then be first in. Now she has the sleeve, Gibbons. Trying so hard to find the form that got her the silver medal in London and that's what Zari scored there for Gibbons. She takes her over with what we call a makikomi. It's a winding throw, takes her opponent, rolls her over her shoulders, and gets Awazari scored. Awazari, half a point, not quite the Ippon, but enough to take her through to fight Sol, the 2013 world champion. Gibbons coming back to form at the right time. The next opponent for Gibbons would be Sol Kyung, the 2013 world champion. Sol had won her first contest on penalties against Wang of Chinese Taipei. Sol represents the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, who have received support from the International Judo Federation so that they could be here in Astana. The International Judo Federation is very proud. Mr. Visa has very good vision. For example, uh, our 14 member team came here to take part in, in this world championships. She helped everything. His idea is centered on athletes. We have a specialized education and sports system in our country. Talented sporting youngsters were selected from this system, and Sol Kiong was one of the youngsters who was selected and I have been coaching her ever since. I know Sol's a really good left-hander. Um, back at home with my coach, you and I've been working on my left-handed skills um, because in the past, say, two years ago, they weren't so great. So in the, especially in the last six months, I've been working on them a lot. It started really well. was doing everything that um, I should be doing. Got her a penalty, so that meant I was ahead. As the fight went on, I then got a penalty, which meant we were 
drawing um, and at this point I was like right you can't let this go you know you can you know you can beat this girl and um, you've done all the gripping patterns you forced her to get a shido don't let it go the other way now and at that point I actually got thrown for Rosari which was a bit of a bummer um, but I think as soon as I got thrown I was like right there's no way I can lose to this girl because I know I can beat her so I got straight back up and on the next exchange I threw her with an Ochigari um, for a Nippon and that wins you the contest so I think it lasted about maybe three minutes the fight and that was me through to the next round. Gibbons having to come forwards, oh and she scores a Nippon! What a Nippon that was, she was a Wazari down, she had to come forwards and then well she hooked the inside of Sol's legs and drove off the bat leg. And look at that, lands the 2013 world champion cleanly on her back for a massive Ippon. Gibbons really showed spirit and tenacity there because she really was determined. She wasn't going to give up. Gibbons shows that she can mix it with the best. And the quarterfinal was against a civilian girl, um, Valence. Um, strong right-hander, um, she's been former European champion, she's always up there in the medal so again I knew it was going to be a tough fight, unfortunately it didn't happen, I lost them um, by a Yuko score and um, a couple of penalties, um, so it, it wasn't great and I was definitely disappointed not to be in the semi-final. It's really hard um, after you've lost the fight to then sort of get yourself back up for the next fight but you have to do it, you don't have any choice. Um, I think it's probably harder in a sport like judo where it's physical because if you do lose not only are you not progressing to the next round but you're actually physically getting a little bit of a beating as well so it, it, it is pretty demoralizing but you're still in the competition you've still got a chance so you have to make sure that you're fully prepared and that you don't let anything go and get yourself ready for that next fight. In my full fight which was the record charge final I had the Kirk and we've actually fought each other since we were 16 as juniors. I felt strong, but I think I probably got beat tactically. I ended up getting four Shidos, which is not great at all, um, and that actually put me out of the contest. So I'm definitely going to have some stuff to go home and work on. As soon as I get home from here, I'm going away for a week to Morocco um, with my husband just to get a little bit of a break. The next year is going to be pretty busy. Um, it's the Olympic qualification year now. Um, the points that we get are worth 100%. So basically we're just going to be travelling the globe trying to pick up as many points as possible to make sure that we get to Rio in a place that we're ready to medal in Rio. Gibbons' GB teammate at under 78 kilograms, Natalie Powell, also started strongly in Astana. By throwing Italy's Galeone on her side, Powell scored a Yuko, and that was enough to put her through. Unfortunately, she was unable to maintain the momentum as Germany's Malzahn buried her with a huge hip throw. It scored Ippon and meant there was no chance of a fight back from Powell. With no other GB representation, it meant that any medal chances had now gone. We caught up again with British coach John Paul Bell to assess the results. At the onset of this tournament, it was all about the athlete's performance on the day. Um, as a sport generally we're driven by medals and obviously I want to win medals as well but I thought the, the remit for the athletes was to deliver their best on the day of performance and if that's good enough, that's good enough. I think we'll um, certainly qualify a number of athletes for Olympic Games and I'm confident we'll come away with medals. Both fighters who had beaten Gibbons ended up with medals. For Kirk winning a bronze and Valensek taking a silver medal. She lost in the final to the latest young Japanese sensation, Umeki, who pinned her for Ippon. It was the third Japanese gold medal in the women's weights, to go with the three from the men's. The final of the under 63 kilograms category was between the reigning world champion from France, Clarissa Begnanu, and Tina Terstenyak, the world number one from Slovenia. Terstenyak sent a clear message as to why she is the number one. After just a minute, Terstenyak was ahead, scoring a Yuko, which was later upgraded to a Wazari. With IJF president Mr. Marius Visa watching on, Terstenyak refused to sit back on her lead. She showed her attacking intent, throwing Agbegnu again, 
this time for a Yuko. The technique was almost identical to the previous one, but it was the first throw that had the better landing and was the more decisive. Terstenjak, Slovenia's new world champion. The final of the under 70 kilograms category featured France's double world champion, Javris Iman. Iman always manages to peak for the big events, and she was at it again in Astana as she buried one opponent after another with some great throws. Her biggest moment was taking out the favourite, Alviar, the triple world champion from Colombia in the quarter final. In the final, she was up against an unexpected opponent in Spain's Maria Bernabeu. Bernabeu had upset the odds, throwing Germany's Diedrich for Ippon in the preliminaries before taking out the top seed and world number one, Polling of the Netherlands. Could Bernabeu produce one more upset and prevent Iman from becoming a triple world champion? So Iman got a chance of becoming a three-time world champion. Balabu having the tournament of her life. What is going to happen? Balabu in white, Iman of France in blue and the crowd loving this. She really is having a great tournament. Sonic Sonic coming, Goshi! Oh my goodness me, it's all over! It's all over before it's even begun and the French celebrate. Sonic Sonic coming, Goshi! And she just dropped right away between the legs and took her right the way over. Brilliant stuff from a man, and she is a three-time world champion. Brilliant. It really was. It never... And look at the tears there. They say it all. She just caught her on the hop, caught the sleeves, dropped underneath, and it was all over. The French celebrate. Here it is, drops right the way between the legs. Tried to ride it, you can't do that. Barnabu went straight over the top, landed cleanly onto her back, and Javris Iman of France wins her third world title. It really is an elite club, three world titles, and whoa, just 12 months before the Olympic Games, what a time to do it. She's looking good for the Olympic title next year. The French celebrate, but look at a man's reaction. She is so happy to once again be world champion. Well, that's goodbye from the women's competition. Join us next for the incredible drama of the men's and women's team events, featuring all the best highlights. We will also take a unique look into Mongolian judo, and find out how they have produced such a strong men's and women's team.